Am I actually gonna get any work done from recording this? Just forget about it. That you're recording. <laughs> Battery said it was full when I left. It was like halfway gone. I'm like, Hi, you two. This is Alex. You know how on point Thomas mimics me at home. Stop. It's it's so like what, what do you say usually? Like, what's your opening tag? Like? This was like five years ago, uh -huh. but I was like, "Hi, you two." I'm telling you, it is the fringes, fringes. I'm trying not to judge you really hard. No, so, like it's really hard. <laughs> I judge myself. It's so bad. I don't know how many times I restarted this YouTube channel, but here I am again. I said I was serious last time, but no, for real. This time is it. I can feel it. Well, I kind of have no choice at this point. It's literally sink or swim for me. Do or die. Like, no going back. I spent hours trying to come up with this content and set myself up for success. Um, it is almost the end of 2024 and here we go again for my first quote first unquote video on this channel this time around anyways i decided to talk about how i started my small art business so i've been wanting to make hoodies for a really long time right to be able to make these really amazing designs and bring them to life so during the pandemic i finally decided to get myself an ipad to start drawing what was in my mind so basically i tend to be the type who doesn't sit and think about things for i i don't know wait what i tend to be the type who doesn't sit but okay this is completely contradictory but okay what i wrote it says i tend to be the type who doesn't sit and think about things for a while but rather i like to jump the gun which i future me right now is like uh kind of pretty major procrastinator over here but whatever um, continuing on, I obviously did a lot of research on all the materials and equipments that I needed to start an apparel brand from home. Um, I knew I wanted to do e-commerce for a really, really long time and I thought apparel and like hoodies would be the avenue that I wanted to go and I watched hundreds of videos on YouTube making sure I got everything I needed to have a successful launch. The one thing I didn't account for, however, was the fact that I didn't have an audience to begin with. Um, but I didn't let that stop me from creating designs I was passionate about, designs that would resonate with others and would be proud to wear the hoodies I designed. That was my dream. I really researched long and hard about which direction I would take in regards to making my designs come to life on the hoodie. So I looked into screen printing, HTV vinyl, sublimation, and even embroidery. But it seems like screen printing would get too messy. Too messy? What the? What the hell? Screen printing seemed like it would get too messy. So I bought a mini set to test out. Never used it till this day, which I probably had it for the last like three years. Um, embroidery machines are actually my ideal go-to, but they're extremely expensive. Like literally starting maybe five thousand, ten thousand dollars just for like a basic one that's not like one threaded but like has at least has multiple threads so you can color your designs versus like having just one i don't even know what they're called um i mean but then again i didn't really have a budget to begin with because everything just went on my credit card but still five thousand dollars is a lot for one thing um considering maybe it was i lacked confidence thinking that like if I was more confident, maybe $5,000, I would have seen it as an investment and like I'd be motivated to like, I don't know, calculate how many hoodies I would have to sell in order to recoup my $5,000 investment, blah, blah, blah. But I don't know. Anyways, so yeah, um, sublimation was a pretty cool idea, but it wouldn't work on my hoodies since they would be dark colored. I was planning on doing most of my designs on a black hoodie. Uh, so that wasn't gonna work. Um, I ended up choosing to work with HTV vinyl as it seemed the most fitting at the time. With that, I also needed a machine that could cut the vinyl without me having to hand cut each design myself because that would take ages and probably give me arthritis or something. I debated long and hard about whether to get a Cricut or Silhouette, but I found Cricut seemed to be easier to roll with. <laughs> no pun intended there. <laughs> There wasn't much of a learning curve to Cricut, tons of videos on YouTube helped. I 
learned how to create my designs as SVG cut files. Since working with HTB meant it's one solid color, it wouldn't make sense to draw something that has intricate details like shading in multiple colors. Um, if you work with HTB, you know that you work with a already pre-colored vinyl and depending on how you go, you could layer those, which I personally don't like or recommend or you could just have it all like line up kind of like a puzzle jigsaw puzzle kind of but i knew right off the bat what design i wanted it would be my back tattoo which i have kind of created as a signature the wingless dreamer um that i wear very loud and proud it's a reminder of the battles i fought by not giving up and still being able to be alive today creating this video for you which that will be a whole nother story on another day about like who I am, where I come from, what I've been through and all that stuff. But anyways, so at first I thought this might be a bit too raw of a design. I mean, stitches on someone's back sounds kind of like it belongs in a horror movie, but maybe I'm the only one who could see the beauty through the pain. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'll never like sell this hoodie and it's just like some a one-off thing that I just wear. Um, even if I never sold this hoodie design, I'd probably I'd be proud to wear it solo. I guess in a way I made it for myself. During the summer, people can see my back tattoo, but during the winters here in Seattle, I knew I'd love to wear my T Dub hoodie, T W Dub, T W D hoodie, <laughs> the wingless dreamer hoodie. I don't know. That's a mouthful. So one thing led to another, I created a few more designs that never really came to fruition. I ended up building a Shopify website for my brand, tried to market it on social media, and it just completely flopped. I don't think I put enough effort into it, honestly. I felt overwhelmed and decided to pivot. So I started watching a lot of YouTube videos on people who started their small business on Etsy by creating stickers. I thought that's such a cute idea. I already had a printer, I had an iPad, and I had a Cricut machine. So I was like, let's try that out. So I went on a splurge on Amazon buying all the necessary supplies to start creating my own stickers. Honestly, I don't know how much money I spent over the years on all my equipment and supplies I bought, but maybe I'll create that into another video one day. Yeah, I have an entire room to myself that I call a art studio, but honestly, it's just more of a story space with all the stuff that I've bought over the years. But anyways, so I knew my goal was to promote mental health awareness. I could draw cute stickers that could be relatable to people who struggle with a mental illness or needed some positivity in their lives. I got to brainstorming ideas, researching on Etsy what other people are selling in regards to mental health related products. As I tried to use Shopify my for, as I tried to use Shopify for my apparel brand, parentheses without an audience, I decided to try Etsy out as a platform. I was fully aware of all the controversy behind Etsy and how they take a huge chunk of fees from your profits, but it was worth a try because they also they are they are also known as a marketplace, so they bring people to your shop, which is a bonus. I mean, I would say I could justify the fees to then not have to market as much because they bring people to my shop. But so, and that leads to stickers are relatively cheap to make. So I figured what's the worst that could happen? I mean, I could probably end up taking home like 50 cents per order, maybe. I don't know. The goal was to just get started. I had to learn all about SEO using the right, what the hell? I wrote right as in like writing, not like right as in left and right. Let me fix this real quick using the right keywords in your titles, having nice photos, paying for ads, and etc. It was definitely a very fun experience. It seems like most people start their small business as a side hustle on top of their full-time jobs or careers, but I was very fortunate to have an entire year without working and focusing on building my own small business thanks to my amazing supportive husband. Actually, I technically had two years, but not like consecutively. Um, I'm very, very fortunate to be able to have a whole year twice to dedicate to you know building a business that i saw as my passion um he saw something in me that i couldn't see due to my imposter syndrome which is a story for another time which that's gonna be a whole nother yeah story but anyway so one thing led to another i would sporadically come up with design ideas here and there experimenting making the stickers into physical products and then learning the best methods to ship it out and whatnot it was all 
self-taught and trial and error and you know here i am roughly two and a half two plus years of messing around um to some people like 200 sales is nothing but i remember when i first got my sale i was over the moon then i got an email one day saying i reached 100 sales then 200 i couldn't believe that there were people on the internet in internet oh my god i can't speak i couldn't believe there were people on the internet that were complete strangers who loved my sticker designs and to me my sticker designs are really simple it's not the art style that i dream of creating but hey it was a start okay so then the reviews started to slowly come in saying that they love the stickers, couldn't wait to put it on their water bottles, and others were sharing it as a gift. I haven't really put in much effort for the past 6 months because I ended up getting a job, parentheses, my lifestyle was becoming more expensive, and my mental creativity well was drying up. I just lost motivation to keep going, I ran out of ideas, imposter syndrome kicked in full time, and I just started working like a zombie. Wake up, go to work, eat, sleep, repeat, it was like that for several months i just didn't have the energy or the brain power to do anything i've been working in the restaurant industry for 12 plus years so serving was an autopilot thing i could do without having to use my brain that also paid the bills and now i've decided to quit my brain dead restaurant job once more to pursue my small business full time for real this time though i mean hey third time's a charm right like literally this is my do or die like i have no more chances i mean technically i do but uh, yeah no i have to i have to get this off the ground running this time so i worked really hard on figuring out what my goals are in life and what i'm most passionate about and where I want to take this business. Since this video is getting too long, I decided I'll create another video that talks about how my imposter syndrome led me down this rabbit hole to then come out stronger than ever. Can't wait to see you on the next video! Okay, thanks, bye!